Okay, um, and welcome back from um, our break, a short break. And uh, we're now at a point of um, sort of maybe having a discussion about what we heard in terms of what we might want to add or how we want to frame the um, information we want back. Um, Representative Rosenquist or Carl. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. No, I just thought, you know, they say that our last presenter was very good at uh, detailing the three different types of pre-authorization, which I think many of us didn't realize uh, that. And uh, based on what we've heard, it would seem like a very definite thing we should be asking this panel uh, that we're uh, asking questions. Can it look seriously at getting rid of the annual uh, renewal, but there may be some great reasons for it, but at the moment, it doesn't seem that useful. And two, to the changing the, the spoke to the hub uh, differential in medication uh, prescriptions going from 16 to 24, looks like doesn't really make a lot of sense. So those two, I think, are the easy ones to possibly dispose of or advise this committee to do. The third one is a little more complicated. We did hear some definite differences between uh, the, what we call the, the efficacy of the, of the different treatments. So uh, anyway, that was just the opening. Okay, okay. thank you, thank you. Um, Representative McFawn, you, um, you had your hand up and then down. Exercising. Yes, I did, Madam Chair, because Representative Rosencrest uh, just uh, said what I was going to say. I think that those three that we should ask uh, the, the board um, to include those three questions. Okay. Yes. Um, one of the things that um, Jackie um, said that... Um, I wrote down was um, that, and I don't know how to put this in, in legislative language, but um, to ask uh, how much is bias um, with regard to um, people who uh, are substance users is impacting this prior authorization process. And, you know, we've had multiple witnesses talking about bias now. And I think that's been helpful to open our eyes about that. And then the other thing she said is that, are there other ways to achieve what DBA, well, this is what I wrote down. These aren't her words, but <laughs> are there other ways that to achieve what DBA needs to get out of this, which is to control the finances, frankly, control what the spend is. Mm -hmm. Are there other ways to do that while I'm not going to say eliminating bias because I know that that is very difficult to do, but to at least reduce the bias um, that seems to be present. Um, so those are two things I took away from, um, in addition to what uh, Carl and um, Topper just said, in addition to that, I, I took away from the last few minutes. Mm -hmm. So one thing I'm still struggling with, and I really appreciate the last couple of days that we've heard two very um, opposite perspectives. Mm -hmm. But what keeps coming through for me and keeps getting elevated is what we started with probably, I don't know, a week, 10 days ago, the comment that I made that this seems like this financial situation for Medicaid seems to be born on the back of the most vulnerable people. I'm, I'm, I'm waving. Um, welcome. <laughs> welcome. Thank you for being here. Um, please join our discussion. We're sort of having a discussion and we'll tell you where we are. Sorry, go ahead. So it just seems like people who have the means to have private insurance, people who have the means to go with, pay cash are experiencing less barriers and is that who we are in Vermont, right? Why is, you know, I understand the financial situation. I know the state can't, has to monitor costs and control costs, but why does that have to be put on the backs of the most vulnerable people who need to have 
access open to them as much as possible so they can improve and be healthy individuals. I guess I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm not quite sure. How is that the most vulnerable are bearing it more than others, but maybe you could explain that a little more. You're saying the private insurers, obviously, you know, they're, somebody's paying those bills more than the state, correct? Okay. Private so, insurance doesn't require um, prior authorization and Medicaid does. Mm -hmm. So Medicaid is for people who are poor, yeah. who have no other so, access. So did we hear that all private insurers don't require- The two that, main insurers main in Vermont do not require any. The only two left. And well, Cigna, right. Cigna's still here. And they also do not have prior authorizations. But I, Cigna? Cigna. But I, I, I mean, I understand what you're, you're saying, but I, I guess I also have to point out that not all MAT requires prior authorization for Medicaid. Mm -hmm. right. It's not, you know, so it's it's only when we get to a certain point. And so it is a, a reduced number of people, but some of the things that were pointed out here today, like the differences between the 16 and the 24, and who needs prior authorization in that um, in that intervening space, to me that seems like a relatively accomplishable mm -hmm. I agree. thing. Um, but I think we just, I mean, for me, I think we have to um, maybe be careful about avoiding overgeneralizations. Sure. Um, because um, there, there are a whole host of people get access without prior authorization through Medicaid as well. It's just, I mean, there, there are other circumstances though that the other insurers do not require and Medicaid does. Yeah, I just, for people listening, I just wanna. Yeah. Be, okay. Be clear. <laughs> um, Commissioner, thank you for taking the time to um, be here. We heard we heard some fascinating um, testimony this morning that I think crystallized that, as one of the um, doctors said, there are two camps, and that there is not um, <clears throat> that the, the the physician world or, um, does not does not necessarily see what we are doing in the same way, um, which is why we have rolled back from, we know exactly what to do, um, <laughs> to uh, asking um, the, the drug utilization, review the review drug board. utilization review board to do some things and for there to, for, for you to come back from Diva to come back with a report. And I think we shared with you, did we share with you that draft? You um, did, Madam was, Chair. Yes, um, thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, and, and we have um, been um, talking some more. Um, and one of the things that we, and, and we're sort of talking right now about what are the questions? that um, we want, um, or what are the prime, um, and one of the things we learned was about that there's a different um, dosage limit in the hub and spoke, depending upon whether it is a hub or a spoke. And um, that, was, that was questioned as to the why. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, some of us around the table might like us to say they should be the same. And <laughs> <laughs> so there are two um, camps still, right, Madam Chair? <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay. Yes. Um, I said we'd ask you. <laughs> I'm happy um, to share what I know. Um, okay. If that um, helps. And, well, and then, then the other the other one was um, a question about the yearly. Um, um, the, the yearly annual review um, or the annual prior authorization for what is quote uh, what is a chronic condition. So those were two of the major questions. The third being probably what brings what brought us to here in the first place. Um, why prior authorization um, medically? Uh, we, we get the money part. Um, but you know why else? Um, and 
But those are like some of the questions we have, but please go ahead. You want to say something? Oh, sure. No, thanks, Madam Chair. And I, I just also want to thank you all for having me here in particular today to just talk through some, some more of this. And um, obviously it's a very complex situation. I think to answer the first question um, and why there's a difference between the max dose of 24 milligrams in a hub versus the max dose of 16 milligrams in a spoke is in my mind, and again, I'm going to just for full disclosure, I am not the medical expert, but I do um, have a good enough understanding here of, of us to, it is not a, um, a, an issue of preference in terms of expertise, credentialing, or and such on the provider's part, as much as it is a difference in how those patients in hubs are monitored versus the patients in spokes. Um, I believe, and it is my understanding, and it would be a great question for those providers to answer themselves, is you know, in the hubs, they are very closely and more frequently um, seen, and they have to go in for their appointments and receive medication and such. So I, my understanding is that is one of the reasons why the, the dosing is 24 milligrams versus 16. Um, again, I'm not a, a clinician, so that would be a, a more of a question for them, but that's what I know in terms of that um, rationale. Uh, um, I am wondering if you have any, if you had, what, what your thoughts were about, um, and I think, of course, this is a moving target. We keep adding or subtracting things. Um, And um, uh, what is your um, opinion? Um, is this something that you that 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 uh, Diva is willing or able to do? We understand there's um, what what's in the three page amendment, right? So I actually, when I looked at the the amendment, I. There was very, there were very few items that I would change. To be honest with you, when I saw the draft last evening, I was, I'm just absolutely thrilled um, that you landed where you did, um, simply because I think it it meets. There's only one area where I can say, and it's more of a process thing than it is anything else, and how our drug utilization review board operates. Um, and I think I can point you to it um, if that's helpful right now, or we can wait until uh, later. No, it, it will be very helpful. And legislative council may be on, um, uh, it is, it, it is listening and is about to um, uh, be able to, to it, it, legislative council, its picture is not here, but is um, listening. And when, when we need her, to present other things, she'll either be a voice or, or if can, a picture. Perfect, perfect. Um, so this particular area is, uh, let's see, it's, it is A, it is letter A, um, I'm trying to find it on my screen now, but it basically says on or before December 1st, 2022, the Drug Utilization Review Board shall review the following, and it says, and submit its finding and recommendations to the Department of Vermont Health Access. Um, the way that it works in our world is that DIVA typically will do a lot of the research ahead of time and present that information to the review board for their consideration. That's, uh, and it's just, like I said, it's a process question. So they wouldn't necessarily submit findings to DIVA as much as they would review the information, I'll add their own expertise and, um, and then make a decision at that point. So I didn't want you to think that they were going out and doing their research because that is not how the board operates. Okay, thank you. Thank you, that's helpful. Can I ask a question? Yeah, oh, please. So 
I'm just curious, is there any chance ever for others, something outside of the administration to present research or evidence as well so that Absolutely. they would have Yes, okay. absolutely. We would welcome that. Um, so we definitely have had other presentations to the board, um, whether it's a new drug class that's being um, presented. Uh, we'd often have outside vendors or, you know, anybody who would like to contribute. Great. Thank you. So, Commissioner, just to, to clarify so I can wrap my mind around this one. Um, what you are proposing is that DIVA would do the initial research requested and, and the questions that we have or, or the, the sub pieces here and looking at various aspects of prior authorization, et cetera, then you would present that to the Drug Utilization Review Board who would then respond to that to DIVA who would then bring that to the legislature. Um, if, if they were recommending changes is what you're saying or put it in the report, uh, I'm not. Uh, both, if they're recommending changes or um, just a report out on their considerations. Yes, we would never, uh, it is really is in our process to make those decisions in a silo at all. So we would want to have a robust discussion with our board to identify, does this make sense um, clinically, fiscally on, um, and the like. And then um, at what point we can discuss that, then we would put it in the report. I think you have a few due dates. We don't have any concerns of, about anything else in this draft. Um, I think it was really just a change from submitting to the word submit to provide um, its recommendations. It's maybe just a word or two change is all we were asking for or to consider, for you to consider at least. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Representative Small, did I answer the question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Still thinking through that one. I'll let you, I'll let you know, Commissioner, if more questions come up. <laughs> uh, Commissioner, um, <laughs> having Excuse me, us, us understanding that there are, for lack of a better term, and this is a bit simplistic, two camps. Um, there is a there. Um, we'd like to make sure that both camps had an opportunity that, that the perspectives of both camps and um, I, I want to say our assumption is that the Drug Utilization Review Board as a board that is um, appointed, shall I say, by one camp, it's going to be heavy on one camp side. So how we, um, how we ensure that there's a diversity of um, at least information and opinions presented, who knows what the, you know, who knows what the result will be, but that's sort of, um, that's my job to sort of say what no one else is saying. <laughs> oh, I think that's reasonable, Madam Chair. I, I, um, one of the things that I have done, I've only been here about three months now, but it has been a, um, a, a quick uh, learning experience for me. But regarding the various boards that we have, what, what I've really tried to do is understand who's on these boards would it maybe um, look at reconstituting them if the terms are expiring um, so that we do have diverse opinions? And then, you know, it's also difficult to, um, in this current world where our providers are, they're often too busy to do some of this work. Um, so we mm -hmm. want to make sure we keep our board members and mm -hmm. uh, ensure that they're able to balance all of their other commitments as well. So I, it is a priority for me and I do appreciate all perspectives because I think it's important it's how you make good decisions. So I hope that helps. Um, no, um, it does help. Um, it helps very much. Um, I'm wondering, I'm just wondering if there is a if, if there's a way in 
that we that there can be a phrase or a word, or you know, a phrase or or to um to put what you just said in 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 this section. I mean, you know, the other perspective. Not, I mean, we don't want to say it that way, but perhaps I, I don't know how to say it. Balanced, uh, balanced presentations or balanced, um, I'm not sure what I would use for, I'm sure we can come up with, with something that, that all point of views are considered. Okay. Um, but I would say um, that I, I think that's important. So I don't have any concerns about okay. anything like that. Um, I, I'm going to, um, Katie, are you able to... Um, uh, enter this. Hi. Hi. How are you? I, I don't know. Um, um, have you been able to? Um, perhaps we we may be looking for your expertise along with the commissioners in terms of how to maybe weave in um, the concept of multiple perspectives being presented. Right. Um, so I'm looking at that section four. Um, and right now, the advice and recommendations are sort of coming from the Drug Utilization Review Board. And the latest version also adds Clinical Utilization Review Board. But I wonder if there could be language about consultation with stakeholders. Sorry, I'm going to turn off my camera. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and we realize that it's nice. This is where, you know, it, of course, you, if, yeah, never mind. Um, we it's love great. Kids. That's great. Right. We, we love it. Kids. Yeah. We love it, but, you know, yeah, know. Um, it may not be the top. We love it, but um, we realize that your mm -hmm. daughter may not want to be star of stage and screen. So we understand. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks for your patience. Um, <laughs> so I was thinking about language about including consultation with stakeholders, maybe specifying a specific type or group of stakeholders, um, but there might be other considerations out there. May I, may I just add an, another comment, Madam Chair? I don't know if this is a, will address it or not, um, but the so the Drug Utilization Review Board is, is a public meeting, um, and so I other points of view would be welcome at that meeting. And I don't know if, if we would need to put language in here to cauterize that or, or not, um, or not cauterize. That's a wrong, that's a surgery term. I am wondering if, um, well, I, there's a couple of things that are going on in my mind. One of which is, that we have a, um, by the end of today, this, if, if, there's a, if there's an amendment, we wanna have that amendment written and so that the body can see it as well. And we are real, and we would like to be working with, with you sort of on it, which is why we wanted you to sort of see this. And um, we had made a few other tweaks. We talked about the, clinical review, and I have, um, and I believe that, and, and Ledge Council had been working on some of those um, in terms of that. Um, and I know there's a public comment period. I, I mean, I hear that. And, and, and I, we might, we might like your first suggestion better than your second suggestion about <laughs> Um, that, yeah. Um, I wonder if it could be something along the lines of with consideration to the diverse views of spoke providers, really getting at the folks who are in the field, in the area, oh, okay. knowing that kind of leaning on the expertise piece, um, while also recognizing those camps that we've been referring to. I think that's a great point, Representative Small. So let me ask you this, if we, um, as we we have, I believe, one or two uh, openings on the board right now. And from a recruitment perspective, if we recruited a member from a spoke, for example, targeting various areas, would that solve for the 
concern here? Give some names. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I'll, I'll send you the link to apply. Um, um, but would that would that meet the need in terms of diverse perspectives? Because we do have we have various clinicians, um, hubs, and spokes that. And the, the, the challenge is really the time commitment to be a board member sometimes. Um, absolutely. Okay. Um, absolutely amenable to that one. Thank you, okay. Commissioner. Thank you. It's a great point. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. I would just offer the kind of distinction as far as when we're looking for um, engaging diverse and balanced perspectives, that it's not only taking place um, when the findings are presented but that actually as you do the review, as you create the findings that you're engaging with diverse perspectives. Is that, does that make sense? Absolutely. Yes. I think that's, that's best practice, to be honest. Um, it's clear that A, um, when I'm, lo I'm looking at what we sort of sent to you, um, that a is where you were pointing out that we had the process, we had the process backwards, backwards or whatever. And um, so they're not submitting their findings um, and recommendations. So that piece needs to be, to reflect what in fact the process is. I think for accuracy sake, that would be- Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And, Otherwise, um, it looked great. And I appreciate the work that you all have done on this. It's, I was, um, I was pleased, to be honest, <laughs> when I read it. <laughs> I didn't know what to expect, so I. <laughs> I realize sometimes this committee has a reputation. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> no, I appreciate the work. I really do. And I'm. I'm thrilled to be able to be part of the conversation. So thank you. Um, um, as we sort of look, I mean, as as Katie, um, as Les Council uh, um, re reworks that one sentence um, or that that part, um, would you be amenable to, however she does it, to somehow put a a phrase or something around what? The Department of Health Access will do absolutely you know, in, in, in making their recommendations. They will have researched or considered. Yes, the, happy to do that. There must be a, a better word than to say the different camps, yeah. but the, uh, <laughs> the diverse <laughs> opinions, the diverse, the diverse you know, perspectives, perspectives. Yeah. Yeah. perspective, For professional judge. I mean, it, really, it is. It is, it is professional, professional judgment. A yeah. different. Um, because I was all I was all on board with um, the um, one of the um, people who testified, and I keep forgetting what it's called. An act of Congress kept saying that um, the pre-authorization for the mono product was took an act of Congress, <laughs> and um, then the two people we heard today, um, who actually represent different perspectives on other issues, sort of said, "Well, um, yes, there is, but." No, it's not an act of con. con. So it's like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, you have a very difficult job. <laughs> I'm not sure who's this more difficult, ours or yours. But, um, really you good know. point. <laughs> um, um, you know, um, you know, we realized that. Um, I mean, we're just hoping that this, um, that this amendment, which we understand from joint fiscal. Um, uh, Representative Whitman, you've talked to Joint Fiscal. Yeah, and we've been in touch uh, with Nolan Langwell at Joint Fiscal Office, and he's basically responded that um, while he won't have a revised fiscal note until after the bill passes, maybe because he knows that <laughs> it can happen, but that this amendment as is has no fiscal impact. Um, so, of course, there's still the fiscal impact for our pilot appropriations, right. which are included in our prior one, but um, and that was in... Uh, Consulting with Diva, uh, okay. you both agreed that as we have here, no fiscal impact. Um, agree. Thank you. So, are we looking to change this draft? Now? Yeah, I think we're, we're looking to change this draft. And um, Katie, um, 
Um, um, uh, Katie may not be able to be on right now. Um, uh, I believe now I'm going to turn to um, to Dane and to Taylor who've been working on this and Dane mostly. Um, are there there was. There's some changes from the first this first draft, and are can you go over any of them with us? Happy to. Um, so first, I'll just sort of um, I'll reflect back what um, we discussed yesterday, and then and the kinds of changes that we sought to make as a result of that, and then I'll try to reflect back what I've heard today. Okay. Um, and what we're kind of considering adding. So from yesterday. Um, it was just a minor change on section four as far as sort of just clarifying. Um, so when you say on or before December 1st, 2022, the Drug Utilization Review Board shall review the following and submit its findings and recommendations related to prior authorization to the Department of Vermont Health Access. So that was just an effort to sort of clarify. We've written, it's a uh, we realize that we wrote the whole section without quite calling that out as the issue. Um, so that should be pretty straightforward. Um, number two, um, looking at the feasibility and costs associated with adding monobuprenorphine products as preferred medications. Um, and then to add and review the current process for verifying adverse effects. Um, so that goes back to the sort of uh, what we heard from Dr. Lord yesterday about needing to say, prescribe an anti-nausea medication before being able to um, move on to mono. So again, just uh, having a review and looking at what's our current process, what are alternatives related to um, getting somebody onto mono buprenorphine. Um, and then uh, things that we've heard, that's the only two things from yesterday. And what I've heard from today that we're interested in is um, uh, investigating, creating parity between the hub and spoke um, providers for their quantity limits. Um, and the second one being uh, removal of the uh, annual renewal. Investigation of that. Investigation of everything here is investigating, yes. you know. Um, oh. But uh, the <laughs> annual approval, yeah, yeah. All of all of this is to get findings and report back. Uh, okay. Everything that we're saying here, okay. um, and I would say that on um, section seven, one thing that I heard from Representative Small as a potential addition and maybe for committee discussion is to add um, information on how many of the denials were then approved after receiving further information, being able to sort of capture that data point. Um, um, so can I clarify that, Representative Whitman? Uh -huh. um, yeah. Do you mean after we have denied them, sometimes we then approve them? And you would want to know how many of those changed? Yes, please. Okay. Is that, yeah. is that something that's feasible to do? I mean, I, out? I, I will have to check on that. I don't okay. know exactly how granular we can be, but okay. I'll, I will check. Um, yes, and you want yeah. that as part of the report, correct? And in section seven. It, it, yeah, and in, in, in that the last report. I guess we're building on to the report that you're already giving. Yeah. Yeah, continuing it. And, oh, and we're continuing it. Yeah. I guess the, the, you. Uh, it's sunsetted this year. It's sun, the report sunsetted, so we are we are um, re-upping it for three more years. And in addition to a second report, right? There was another report that you had asked for in here. Yes. So there's two uh, in section section four, page two of the amendment. It's through the Drug Utilization Review Board that we've that we've discussed this, um, and then on section seven, it's basically the current report that we've received for the past three years, looking to continue it as well as bolster it with some additional data. Um, 
I actually have one more. <laughs> That's what I have a question about before yeah. we move on to some. Um, Commissioner, um, with regard to that, um, the, the uh, request that you're going to look into seeing whether or not that data is that granular or not. Um, so I guess what I'm trying to figure out is if it's reported, in, if it's in this report and it's reported as a denial, is it reported as the sort of like final action or is that an, it, the interim action? I think that's the final action, but I'm not the expert on that piece. So I will find out from our pharmacy team. Okay. All right. Awesome. Thank you. Um, and I want to ask the committee something. Um, or maybe it's asking the committee and commissioner. Um, we're asking you, you know, in the report or whatever in section four um, around these questions that relate to the drug utilization review board and the clinical. Yes, uh, thank you. I was going to bring that up. As I, think that, well. I think that's that. That was something that came up basically. And so in my research last night, as I was doing, getting ready for the bill presentation, happy to hear uh, the committee's feedback on this, but essentially that there's a drug utilization review board and a clinical utilization review board. We know that it's within the DURD's charge to look at prior authorization. Looking at the clinical utilization review board's charge is also has to do with prior authorization. Oh. And speaking to Diva uh, this morning, my understanding was hearing from uh, Nisa James is that essentially the department would be doing that anyway, oh, okay. internally reviewing with the clinical review board as well when they come up with their findings and receiving feedback. That's absolutely <laughs> correct. And I think it actually provides uh, a more holistic look at what we're doing and the decisions we're making by bringing it to both boards. So it is what we do. So is what's being suggested that we add clinical utilization review board and drug utilization review board since that's what the department would be doing anyway. Correct. Okay. Uh, and when you say when we say we are looking for a report, could the we're interested in some specific questions. So could the report be those sections of the minutes from related to those questions or, or, or their ultimate, you know, uh, I, I, yeah. I guess I'm trying to figure out what's the, I, 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 how, 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 how big a report you are looking for to. Yeah. So my, my understanding and, and uh, commissioner, uh, please let me know if uh, I'm off here, but essentially the majority of the report and the finding that's going to be something that's available and produced by Diva, right? Right. Um, so that will be that will be available to us. What we're really getting from the DURB and the CURB is their uh, recommendations, uh, their approval, or you know what they. Now that we have this information, what are their recommendations for changes? Which is what those boards do anytime that they're looking at a new medication or any kind of policy changes. They give a thumbs up or a thumbs down as to a a recommendation related to one of these things. So it could be meeting minutes. You know, I mean, because just, there's just, I mean, I, I'm just, uh, um, I, I was reading into your comment, Commissioner, when you said, oh, there's two reports. Um, and and try, I guess I was trying to um, reassure you that we're not, that we're not looking for um, um, something major. Um, Thank you. And uh, Legislative Council, you are, um, um, I understand, um, might be available now. Um, uh, <clears throat> Can I ask a question then while we go, go ahead, ask a um, question. I'm, and then I think this is for the committee, but I'm not sure. <laughs> Earlier today, Madam Chair talked about when we had the testimony that she had asked a couple of pharmacists about the override and how often they used it and that it was not used that often. And I just wondered, it, it, there, it seemed to be twofold. One, that it, if patients asked, or if the people going to get their prescription asked them to activate it, and then, or is it them asking 
the patient or the, the uh, I don't know, the prescriber, the prescriber but the, the person who's going to get their prescription asking, so which, which way does it go? And if, and it doesn't happen regularly and there seems to be, is there education needed around this? And should we put this in here anywhere? Because it does seem to be something that could be better understood in the field. So I just put it out there. Cause I did, okay, there how, is, how is an individual supposed to know that they have the ability to ask for that? Where do they find that information out? Right. Um, if there's if there's the you know a, a delay in getting the prior authorization, for instance. Exactly. How, how do they know that? Or if they show up in the pharmacy and the pharmacist says, "I'm sorry, I haven't gotten prior approval yet." Should, I always imagined from the testimony that it would be the pharmacist who'd say, "But don't worry, I can give you three days," yeah. and then, but that's not what's happening. And then, so how is the person supposed to know to ask? I've heard that there's a possibility that you could override that. Can you help and me? Would they have the, like the ability to ask? Like I just picture certain people who even if they knew they had that right to ask, they wouldn't ask. That, yes, <laughs> also sounds really complicated to try to track and to put into a report. And so, and in simplifying, if this is a direction we would want to go for the committee, I wonder if we could examine uh, an automatic, if, if, the, if Medicaid would be amenable to an automatic um, institution of that three-day override. So if the prior authorization hasn't gone through and the person goes to request their medication, it isn't an ask that they would have to make, but it would automatically apply. They would get the three days and then would be able to come back. Great question. Again, as a report, just to correct Commissioner, not something to put into practice, but something to examine. Just understanding the barriers uh, on both ends for those who are consumers as well as for pharmacists. So let me let me ask the committee, and then we'll ask right. you. Is that something you would like to add to the report? Is that information? All those informally who would like to um, add that to the report, please raise your hand. Madam Chair. Are, yes. are, you, are you saying add the sentence that Taylor just said? Yes. As as a uh, a requirement that it's automatic. No, no. As, as 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 a um, as an as another question for them to look at to make it automatic or not. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay. All right. Thank you. So um. um C committee, but what I'm going to say is, uh, I, I'm going to, this is my, um, as we're managing time mm -hmm. and everything else, mm -hmm. this will be Representative Whitman's amendment. And um, Representative Whitman, if you would, um, as we continue a little bit more with the discussion, work with K with Legislative Council on language that we've talked about and share it with um, the commissioner. Um, and so, um, and, and, the, and uh, then we as a committee would take a vote tomorrow morning um, on that, on that, uh, on the final, um, language with um, my dream is that uh, commissioner that you um, would find the, um, the revisions acceptable you don't have to love them but acceptable <laughs> um, <laughs> um, and that um, you know you two would have until nine o'clock tomorrow morning to let us, I mean, actually, if you could, um, if, if, if uh, Representative um, Whitman could work with you or your staff or shit, you know, um, or your staff could work with Pledge Council. That, that's, my, that's my thought about a process um, in terms of timing and moving forward. And I see, um, Topper, you have a question. Uh, yeah, I just want, thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to make sure that um, when 
uh, Katie's drafting that the four questions that we talked about this morning uh, are in her mind somehow. Yes, that's a, um, thank you for that uh, clarification. That is what we would be um, commissioner sort of thinking about at one, clarifying the real process. Um, two, maybe at, um, potentially adding a question around, um, uh, I wanna say it, it would be audit, the pharmacist automatic three day um, emergency. And we're talking emergency, whatever that is. Um, and then the, um, the, the, the questions around um, parity between settings to explore that. Um, and there may be a really good reason, but there are different camps. Uh, and uh, the other one was um, why the annual review for um, what is a chronic condition and maybe figure out how to put the concept of getting the information from diverse professional medical opinions somewhere in, in, in that. Those are the themes of, that are different or added that we'd be thinking about. That Representative Whitman, I think, would be thinking about adding. Is there anything else or anything that people um, were talking about? Us, we're talking about anything else in, add, in adding to the report? Yes, Representative Small, you're making faces. Oh, I was just laughing because that seems like a dangerous question, Madam Chair. I know, <laughs> I know. If there's anything else, I, um, I have nothing else. Okay, then clearly no one else does. <laughs> 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 no, I'm, uh, uh, Carl, do you have um, anything else? I, it sounds like we, what you were reiterating, sounds like some of the issues I wanted Clarify. Uh, Dane and I talked about it also. So, okay, all right. Um, Ray, you were sort of. You want to make sure we sort of look at the whole concept, which we are in terms for asking them to. And Dane, you're going to be the author of this amendment. So, <laughs> well, uh, I had one idea that I'd like to check with all of you about whether it's uh, worth something to investigate further. Uh, take some time looking at. And that's how we heard um, from a few people the sort of continuity of care for Vermonters who have been incarcerated, <laughs> prescribed the mono product, and then moving out and then needing to transition to another product and just looking at the, that process and practice and whether or not that could be uh, reconsidered. If I may, it was also on my list. I didn't mention it. Um, I, I, I know, and I appreciated that. <laughs> I, I thought I thought you might, Madam Chair. Um, and one consideration I will bring up is that if we do include that in the amendment, that amendment will then have to go to corrections and institutions mm -hmm. for consideration. So I wonder if maybe we add it to uh, Representative Wood's <laughs> list for next year um, of things for us to consider and look Justice deeper Olson. into. Oh, 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 we could ask Joint Justice, we could ask Joint Justice Oversight to look at that over the summer. In the right. bill? We could, yeah, yes. another right. section. <laughs> Would which, that which, have to? which uh, commissioner? You don't have to necessarily. No, that would. I don't believe that. That I can. I could check with the with the current chair of the Joint Justice Oversight, but that wouldn't require it to go to corrections no. institutions. No, would it? no. Okay. no. That's why I kept it on my. Well, page. Um, yeah. I'm sure it, was on, it was on my list as well, uh, but um, yeah, um, commissioner, commissioner, what we heard, uh, um, and we may be premature in putting this in, except it was. I think for many of us, it was a bit of a horrifying. We, we heard that in, in, in the correctional facilities, um, folks are given the mono, that that is what they are given, um, that, that that is the drug that they are given. And I realized that's not you. That is um, the corrections doctors, which is someone they co contract with. Right. And then they leave. So it, this really is outside of, um, this is a section you wouldn't have to worry about. It, <laughs> um, because it, would, it really has to do with the contractors who um, then only give them three days 
of one day of supply where it comes into then Trump, when, when it comes into your world of Medicaid is um, then the person has to immediately go on, Suboxone. Go on to Suboxone yeah. and that transition for some can be very hard. I understand. Um, <clears throat> um, but that would be a whole... Um, we can either formally or informally ask justice oversight and let's let's I, think I about well um, I, I want to give the commissioner the ability to think about that um, what we would be doing is we would be asking the justice oversight committee um, which deals with corrections and other issues related to justice to put that on their summer plan and which might mean having people come in and testify. Right, that's what it, that's what it would mean. Yeah. It would okay. mean having, <clears throat> you have, that's what it would mean. So I, I want to give you um, the opportunity to think about that. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think that is, it's imp an important issue, but doesn't necessarily fit with this initiative right now. Um, it's very important though. So I'm, <laughs> This is one of the areas okay. where we need some. Um, so, um, uh, Commissioner, how should we, how do we, the Royal We, how should um, Legislative Council and Representative Whitman be in touch with you so that um, you're, so that you are involved? Um, regarding today's discussion or regarding the corrections discussion or both? So today's, and today's discussion that was going to um, be, be a, new, a new amendment, not sure. what you saw, but okay. an added yes. amendment. Thank you. Um, I'm happy to, my email, I think Representative Whitman, uh, both Representative Whitman and Small have my email. Um, okay. So that's a good way I can offer my cell phone um, offline if you'd like. Um, yeah, okay. And we'll keep it moving here. I'm understanding that there's a deadline <clears throat> of 9 a.m. tomorrow for your submission. Right. Um, and so we would have to try to get back with you by the end of today, if possible, if, I ha if we have and by, and by the end of the today, if possible, and... Yeah, that, that would be the best. But. Okay, thanks, Madam Chair. I think the only question that I have related to the, the last point, which was how do we satisfy the diversity of opinion uh, requirement? I, I don't know that we, so if we put that in this, this amendment, how do we, DIVA, satisfy that requirement in a report style? Um, so that would be my only question, whether it's, you know, board recruitment, um, outside test, you know, outside presentations or from people, uh, folks not on the board, you know, I, I don't know what that looks like. So I would just want a little more context. Okay. Um, I would ask you to think about the context of what feels um, within how you would be getting information to present to the um, two um, review boards as well. Right, right. Yeah, but, I think um, that those are important. Okay. Um, so committee, I think that we are at a good place to stop. Um, and so what um, I, I have a general um, a sense that at least, at least six people on the committee support the, no. Um, we won't be taking any kind of vote until um, 9 a.m. tomorrow morning, and this will be um, uh, rather that even though this was a committee bill, the amendment will be just from um, uh, Dane, and uh, then we will vote on it on 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Oh, oh you're, she's looking at me. I mean, witness tomorrow. Okay, then we're going to do it not at 9 a.m. We're going to do it um, at. Um, we can do it at 9 a.m. Can we do it just what? before then? Or just before the break? 
Either way, I guess. <laughs> um, folks, can we come in at um, 8.45? We can, Madam Chair. Um, I, I'm seeing the commuters raise, um, roll their eyes. Uh, we'll, we'll make that work. You know? It's only 15 minutes. Okay, it's only 15 minutes. It should be it's very be after maybe a, a nine o'clock floor. Yes, I know that will be well. And in the meantime, um, um, hopefully, uh, Representative Whitman will be able to have shared this with us. And if we have questions, sure. and this will be the vote. One process question um, and thinking about last week, I don't know if we ever did a straw poll on the appropriations amendment to this bill. I think we were waiting for- We did. We did. We did? No, I thought that uh, Representative McTumper was sort of like, we don't know what we're working with yet. So should oh, okay. we run oh, 464 yes. amendment? We started but talking we about it, yes. Okay. 728, so. Oh, um Okay. So it might be a double vote. Okay, no, okay. I'm sorry. What we're going to do is we're not gonna come in at 845. Um, we are going to come up here before lunch after the after the all important judicial retention there is lunch and the, their assumption according to um, the emails that we got judicial retention will take an hour so immediately upon that we'll come up here and we will have our um, two votes on that Tomorrow. So nine o'clock tomorrow. Nine o'clock tomorrow. We're sticking right. to nine o'clock tomorrow. Okay. <clears throat> because and oh, I'm sorry, we got it. <laughs> with a shorter <laughs> time for lunch. I know. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank well, you. Madam for Chair. Yes. Madam Chair, we are going to get this thing in writing, right? Before we come up Absol there. We're absolutely going to have it in writing. <clears throat> Probably. Probably, probably at some time, to, we'll have it at some time tonight <clears throat> so that it, we will have time to um, ask questions through email and stuff like that. Cool. And um, we will take the straw poll on the um, appropriations committee um, amendment and then on our amendment. Okay. Sounds good.